seam tool has become a bit redundant because of how the flange tool will auto miter corners and create different corners. But there's still some situations where the corner seam tool um, has a good fit. Just to show how the, how the tool works, as you can see here, I've created two separate flanges. And what I want to do is I want to connect them in the corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the corner seam tool. And it doesn't really matter if you select inside or outside, but what I want to do is I want to connect this edge and that edge. And now what you can see here is I've got different options for specifying the size. So right now it's maximum, maximum gap distance. I can do it by symmetrical gap, I can do an overlap, and I can do a reverse overlap. The other option here is for um, specifying the size is I can go in the face edge distance. And here notice that I can do no overlap, I can do overlap that direction, or I can do overlap in that direction. So some different options here for specifying um, you know, what this gap size is actually being measured at. So I'm gonna pick this option here. I'm gonna go with the default gap size value. I'm gonna click okay. And notice how I extended that face, that one, um, and created that corner. Now because of my, my styles and the relief shape in the corner, that's what I'm getting there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit this corner shape. I'm gonna to flip to the other option. I'm gonna click okay and notice how it's reversed the condition. If I edit this, notice I can expand it and I can actually change how it's aligning the corner. So in this case, um, based on my options here, we can see that it's not really gonna make any difference, but there are some options there in how we're aligning the, the corners. Now another place where the corner seam tool works is with hems, because hems won't auto miter. So what I've done here is I've created my first hem, I've created my second hem, and I've just purposely offset it away from the corner so that I don't get any errors when I'm creating it. So I'm gonna use the corner seam tool and say, okay, I really want a, a seam between that one and that one. Now, depending on the option here, let's just create a, a symmetrical type here. I'm gonna click OK, and notice how it's mitered those corners for me. So let's create that 45 degrees in between there. We modify that one and say, let's go with the overlap. We'll click OK, and we can see the condition that it's created. So in situations where you have things like hems, you can use the corner seam tool to bring those together and create that, that condition in the corner, um, probably the easiest and the quickest method in that, in that sense. Another real powerful place for the corner seam tool is where you're taking solid models that weren't created with sheet metal features and you want to convert them into a sheet metal model. So here's a solid model that I've actually created as a cube and then I shelled just to show the process here. And what I've done is I've converted it to a sheet metal part. But what I want to do is this will not flatten for a couple of reasons. But the first reason I'd like to address is this back corner here because it's, it's all as, as one, one continuous face here. So I'm going to use the corner seam tool with the rip option. By using the rip option, I can select that exact, exact existing face or edge between the faces. And I can specify how I want that face to be created. So I'm going to select this option here. I'm actually going to go two times the gap size in this case. I'm going to click OK and notice how it's brought those back and actually split that up. So I modify this again, we can go symmetrical. Let's go gap size here, let's just do the gap size and I will click okay and we can see it's created that symmetrical one. Now I still won't be able to flatten it because there's no bends in the corner, um, but I can add that after, but it just shows you that there are multiple purposes or multiple uses for the corner seam tool.